and that alters uh, this, this boring biochemistry, and we still really don't understand the details. Because, you know, how does that actually cause a cell to divide? It's complicated. Uh, next slide, please. But basically, it's very simple. The cyclin accumulates, turns on CDC2, that's the name of the left hand protein. The cell enters mitosis, then the cyclin gets destroyed. Uh, the CDC2 turns off and the, the cell exits mitosis. Easy peasy. And because something which has been regarded as very, very complicated actually turned out to be very, very simple when you understood it, that's absolutely sort of perfect Nobel Prize winning material because, um, you know, this was a fantastic, it was a very, very important basic biological problem about which absolutely zero progress has been made for, you could say, several hundred years several hundred years, and then we were just lucky enough to, to stumble on the, on, on the truth in the course of studying something completely, completely different. Next slide, please. So that's what you get for it. Um, this says, for their discoveries of uh, key regulators of the cell cycle. And um, having sort of got over the shock of being a Nobel, because it's very hard, actually. I mean, you know, it's, they're much too big. So it's a very, it's a heavy burden to bear, and it takes a while to get, get used to. But actually, um, you know, I'm, I, 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 I'm quite proud of this discovery. I think we did a good, good job, and I think we set a good example. Next slide, please. So I want very briefly, I, I think we should uh, skip over this, actually. Let's, let's just skip, keep skipping. Next, 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 next. So, I'll get to the point. <laughs> get, a, get rid of the data. Get to the point. So one of the problems with this idea is, you know, you have to you, you turn on an enzyme that sticks all these phosphates on, but of course, to get out of mitosis, you have to take all the phosphates off at the end. So the question is, you know, how do you how do you balance that putting on against getting off? And it's a very familiar problem because if you want to fill your washing machine with water to wash your face in the morning. Uh, the first thing you must do is turn on the tap. There's no question, no water, no tap, no water. But to fill the basin, you have to do something else, which is put in the plug. Because otherwise, the water will, will fall out of the bottom as quickly as it comes in the top. So next slide uh, just, just shows uh, that. Next, please. So this is the enzyme that puts the phosphates on, and that is the enzyme that takes the phosphates off. And I think you don't need to be a trained biochemist to realize that actually when you turn on the tap, it's really rather important, if, if your object is to fill the basin, to, to put, the, put the plug in. And um, that was another example where I'd been thinking about this for a long time and then finally discovered that that actually does happened, but I had so little confidence in this theory that actually I never put anybody onto it until somebody found what those slides were showing, a little tiny clue that said that was actually happening again, a sort of very long shaggy dog story of following your nose down, down the next piece. Keep going, come on, next. Next, next. And the, the, the circuitry actually looks, I mean, this looks reasonably simple, but don't, don't worry about the, the details. And the red arrows show what happens when the cell is dividing, and the blue arrows in these things, I don't know what they're called, um, show when the cell is in between uh, dividing. And it turns out that this is, people are very keen on this. This is systems biology, actually. And the interesting thing about it is that when you look at that relatively simple diagram, and there are some, and there are lots more complicated interactions, uh, but even this one is very, very difficult to tell how it actually works, what the properties of the system will be, under what circumstances it will be in this state, and what circumstances it will be in, in, in that state. And I found it actually quite helpful now to talk to theoretical biologists who can put mathematical equations. So I'm sort of going back on what I said at the, at the beginning. It turns out that theoreticians can be useful because they can guide the experiment. Next slide, please. And it's sort of interesting, going back to this business about experiments, is a, a very famous uh, French physicist who last died uh, a few years ago, Pierre Gilles de Gênes. Um, 
French students are inclined to think that theories of things and experiments are some kind of lousy cookbook operation which you do hastily at the end of the work. But look at the numbers for the wind in the willows theory. This is a theory about how substances interact with each other. I mean, in other words, uh, how, how friction works, what actually happens when you try to slide one surface over another surface. And it's a molecular explanation of that. Um, basically, once you start sliding the, the, the you have to imagine twigs interacting on the surfaces. And once you start sliding, then the twigs bend over, and so it becomes easier to carry on sliding than to get it sliding in the first place. Uh, wind and Willow theory, three months' work for four or five people. The experiment, something like four years of work on the optical side, four years of work on the surface side, done by different people. So experiments are really the stumbling block. And uh, it's very nice to hear a theoretical physicist actually Say that. Next, please. And he goes on to say, there's a thing at the end saying, notes on style. Here he is, the great man. Science is clearly a form of art with the same invention of the same doubts. There are major differences, however, and this is what really relates to you guys. One is the difficulty of communication. An Indian playing his flute in the streets of Bogota invents a new tune. Within 10 seconds, and passerby may be struck very positively for the whole, their whole life. But in our trade, a beautiful discovery can be transmitted only to people who have been through a long, specialized education. We must do our best to keep in contact with our fellow citizens. But we often, but we often fail. How, how, how true is that? Next, please. Incidentally, the artistic profession suffer from many parasites, among others, the art critics or commentators, I guess that's you. Fortunately, we do not have the counterparts of the art critic in our sciences, although some referees tend to limit this style. That's a nice thing to say. Next slide, please. So I think um, the, the moral of the story is that being interesting is more important than being right, because you never get it completely right. And it doesn't matter if you get things slightly wrong, because uh, you know that's in, in, in the nature of things, because and I sort of rather disagree with these people who take a gloomy view about how many scientists are frauds, because I think if somebody makes a very important claim, and a good example is the recent thing about uh, acid-inducing uh, stem cells, which tragically was disproved very rapidly, and tragically for the people who were involved. I don't think it was handled particularly well. But the important thing was that the record was set straight very, very quickly, because the original claim was simply, simply bogus. And uh, I, to me, that's the way to, to correct science, not lots of investigators coming in and saying who is at who is fault. Let's just get to the bottom of things and find out what's real and what's not. Next, please. And I finish with uh, going back to the great Schrodinger and his equation. We said somehow in one of his essays, science is a game. And I do think that the important thing is to, you know, to remember that, the playfulness, which is so important a part of the process, and he goes on, but again with reality. The difference between science and arts is mainly that you can check whether it's right, and anybody can check. It's an incredibly open, democratic uh, mode of, 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 doing, of doing business. And uh, I guess at the end of my career, I haven't had a lab now for, since 2011, so I'm, you're looking at a I has been scientist, but I can say that you know I'm proud to have been part of that. And what's amazing now is that you see the next generation uh, taking over, and people have even forgotten who discovered stuff. You're just sort of part of the, the background history. So thank you very much for.